Jock has had a chance to spend some time with some really sustainable organizations, and to name a, just two, the, the Utah Jazz and the San Antonio Spurs, two organizations who, in a lot of ways, define sustainability. He's also had a chance to play for and learn from some of basketball's best coaches, Roy Williams, Jerry Sloan, Doc Rivers, Greg Popovich. And it's those experiences coupled with, with Jock's own vision and his intellect and his attention to detail that we feel uh, gives us a lot of promise moving forward. And, and with that, I'll like to introduce the, the new head coach of the Atlanta Magic, Mr. Jock Vaughn. This is an extremely exciting day. I'm enthused. In the same breath, I am humbled by this opportunity. Dan, your family has been unbelievable. The trust that you've put in to my abilities, I thank you. Rob, Alex, <clears throat> this is going to be fun. It's a challenge, but we're going to do this together. And for me, that's extremely important, and I thank you. My family, who has been my support stream, my wife, She's at home right now, getting the kids ready for school and talking to realtors and being the unselfish and perfect wife that she is. My kids who had to convince a little bit to uh, come to Orlando, uh, but as soon as I said uh, Disney World and uh, Magic, I was, I was golden, so that's good. Rob mentioned that I've had the opportunity to be around some great programs and some great coaches. I don't like to mention names, but three guys that I have to in particular today. One being Roy Williams. His ability to show me how to believe in guys and care for them more than when they're just on the basketball floor. For that, he's the epitome of a great coach. To Jerry Sloan, who taught me the will to compete and in the last five out of six years, I've been around a gentleman who just goes by the name of Pop. I've emulated him. I've taken notes. I've shared an office. He's been unbelievable to me to allow me to be around his brilliance. And for that, I thank him tremendously. Sometimes life is, it's about timing, it's about luck, but sometimes you have to stick your, your neck out a little bit and take a, a leap of faith. Create your own destiny. Nothing wrong with that. The Boss family is doing that today, taking a leap of faith. And my ability to, to relate to guys, to communicate with individuals, to get a group of men to gather together for a common goal, to have resolve, to compete. I'm proud to be a part of that. Today, the destiny starts. And I'm thankful to be the, the head coach of the Orlando Magic. All right, thank you, Jock. OK, we'll open it up for questions now. If you could wait for a microphone, and also state your name and affiliation, please. John, let's start with you. John Denton, OrlandoMagic.com. Jock, when you were here, 2002-3, uh, I remember Doc always said, someday Jock's going to make a great coach. And, and Rob said the other day, when he saw you in San Antonio, he knew someday you were going to be a great coach. How, how long ago did this process begin that you knew you wanted to be a coach? When my knees and my ankles start hurting. <laughs> you get a little smarter then. Um, my favorite poet, Maya Angelou, says, some, some people will forget what you said uh, and how you said it but they'll never forget how you made them feel. It's, for me, that's extremely, extremely important. That the first time I crossed paths with, with uh, Rob, the way I made him feel, when Doc Rivers coached me, the way I made him feel. I'm an unselfish individual. I believe in that's, that's the way to do things. You sacrifice yourself for the, for the betterment of a group, of a team. And I'm proud to say that uh, that's the way I'll coach. And those are the beliefs that I have. 
Pat. Jacques Pat Clark from WESH. Uh, we assume you've heard of Dwight Howard. I uh, was wondering if you're privy to all the conversations that have been going on. Have you spoken to Dwight? And if so, what did you say? If you haven't talked to him, what would you say if you could? Pat, I have not uh, talked to Dwight, but I have not talked to any Magic player uh, at all. Uh, I have been on the outside looking in, and so now I'm a part of the inner circle. So uh, those things are probably to come, uh, and I look forward to talking to, to every single Magic player that, that we'll have. Uh, John, uh, Mike Simon, uh, Fox 35 here in Orlando. Can, can you just describe your thought process? You said that the organization stuck its neck out in hiring you, but not really having an idea what your roster is going to look like when you take the court for the first time. Are you sticking your own neck out a little bit here? Faith. Faith in your abilities. Faith in the people around you. One of the great character building attributes of the franchises I've been around is the foundation, the base is having good people around, pulling and pushing in the same direction. The DeVos family is about that. Alex Martins is about that. And I know Rob Hennigan is about that. And so for me, it was a no-brainer that with these gentlemen, it's okay. I'll stick my neck out. George? Yeah, Jocko, in front. George Diaz with the Orlando Sentinel. A little bit what Mike said, you know, going into a lot of uncertainty, perhaps a rebuilding situation. What, how do you embrace in terms of what your coaching style is going to be, especially facing so much uncertainty moving to the future with, with the franchise of, of what the makeup of the team will be? I, I talked to someone earlier and I told them, blessed are the flexible. <laughs> so they should not be bent out of shape. <laughs> I believe in Rob and his ability to get good people around me, good, good players around me. I want people who want to be coached, who want to compete, who want to be great. I'm pretty easy. Mm -hmm. Hi, it's Sarah Perrett for Univision Orlando. And I was wondering, um, are you more excited as a coach or as uh, the fact that you're going to be with a new team, a new philosophy? of your building, what's more exciting for you? Describe that emotion. Everything's exciting. Uh, this is exciting. Uh, I've met new people today. That's exciting. Mm -hmm. uh, my family uh, is going to be <coughs> with me. That's exciting. Uh, the whole process was exciting, to be honest with you. Uh, it was extremely thorough, uh, which gave me a, more of an appreciation of the approach of this franchise. Uh, that's one thing I never had to worry about. These three gentlemen uh, and their thoroughness at all. And, uh, but that process gave me reaffirmation of what I believe in, uh, my core, my values, what I think are important. And so for me, this is the whole realm is exciting for me today. Mike, Mike Bianchi, Orlando Sentinel. When uh, Alex made the coaching change and decided to change coaches, he said one thing he was looking for was a coach who relates to players uh, perhaps better than the old coach. Can you just talk about your ability to relate to players? You're not that far removed from being a player. We've been successful here, and I will never underestimate that, and I'll give credit to the success that came before me. Some will say I'm inexperienced. I've played 12 years, and I've coached two years. Would my resume look a little nicer if it said 14 years of experience? Maybe so. But I've sat in the seats that the guys our coach have sat in. I'll be able to relate to personal, physical, mental stresses that they come across every day because I've been there. And I think they'll relate to that and they'll appreciate that. And they'll know that I'm fighting for them and that I believe in them. And that'll be my approach. Josh. Josh, Josh Robbins, Orlando Sentinel. Where do you stand in terms of hiring a staff, and do you have the full authority to hire who you want? In the process, Josh, of getting and finalizing our staff, uh, the one great thing that I never have to worry about is doing things on my own. Uh, Rob and I will have a great partnership together, and the 
core of my staff will be situated around guys with great vigor and enthusiasm for the game of basketball. They'll be able to relate to the guys that we have on our staff, communicate with them, teach them, correct them, praise them. That will be the qualification for the staff that we put together. Okay. Jock Dieter, Fingerboard, WKMG. Um, you play, you coach, and now you're a head coach, and you talked about being on the outside, now you're in the inner circle. Being on the outside, how do you, how do you think Dwight Howard, as you being a former player, has handled this situation that is ongoing here with the Magic? For me, now that I'm on the inner circle, my approach is I'm loyal to this organization. And that's the only way I think about right now. That what we do going forward will have the best interest of this ball club. For me now being in the inner circle, that's, that's where my thought process lies. And, uh, and I think that's a good thing. Scott? Jacques Scott Inez with WDBO and Magic Broadcasting. Uh, you mentioned some of the coaches that you have worked under, played under, uh, coached under as well. Uh, is there a common thread with these coaches that you'd like to take forward into your new gig here in Orlando? Without a doubt, Scott. All those guys enjoyed the day-to-day -day competition. We wanted guys on the floor who competed, who played hard, who sacrificed. But the common thread was guys on the floor who competed, and I appreciate that. Larry? Jocko, Larry Ridley from Wish TV here in Orlando. Um, would you like to coach Dwight Howard, and what is the game plan with Rob? I know you guys are on the same page, but what do you plan on saying to Dwight, and what's the plan as far as going forward here uh, before training camp starts, and what's your vision of that? There's a lot of players I like to coach. You got a, you got a list for me? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, like I said before, I want to coach guys who want to be coached, uh, who want to be great, who want to be here. And uh, it's, I'm a simple person. And for me, it boils down to those, those simple, uh, simple things. Being great, want to be coach, and want to be here. Joe? Jacques, that being uh, said, I'm going to ask it a little more bluntly. Will you try to convince Dwight Howard to say? I will talk to Dwight, as I will with every Magic player that we have. And that will be my approach. I don't have a relationship, but I haven't talked to any other player, Magic player as well. For me going forward, I just look forward to the opportunity of, of talking and communicating with every Magic player on our staff. Kyle? Job, Kyle Hightower from the Associated Press. Um, I'm sure it's all been a whirlwind so far with the, with the hiring and everything, but uh, you've missed the draft and stuff like that. How fast are you going to get started and um, get, get here to Orlando get to work? I've already started writing on my whiteboard a little bit, so that's a good sign. But I think the best thing for me now is to prioritize a little bit. Uh, a lot needs to be done, but at the same time, that's the, that's the thrill, that's the joy. That's what's uh, going to bring me into the office every single day and have me roll up my sleeves. And uh, I look forward to that. Pedro? Jack, Pedro, so welcome on the Orlando. Um, this franchise for the past five years, I would say, has been considered a championship contender, even though they have not won yet. But moving forward, what do you see the future for this team with the whole situation with White Howard perhaps leaving? How do you see this team moving forward? There's still a level of success that wants to be achieved. For me, success is each and every day, my team getting better. Better as individuals, better as players. So for me, that will be the goal going forward, and that'll be the mark of success. Mike? Uh, Rob, can, can you just talk about, uh, everybody's been mentioning rebuilding, rebuilding. Are the Magic in rebuilding mode? And if that's the case, um, how patient are fans and, and officials going to be with a new coach? You know, I think the, the one thing that we can stress to our fans is that we want to build a team that they can be proud of, that they can relate to, that they can identify with. And what that looks like, how that looks, when it comes to its you know, finite form, um, those are all things we're evaluating. And the one thing that, that we'll tell our fans is we're going to continue to 
to look at all options to try to improve this team. We're going to continue to, to try to build piece by piece, brick by brick, into something that's sustainable. And at the end of the day, it's, it's about putting a group of guys on the floor who want to be coached by Jock, who want to be led by Jock, and who represent the types of values and, and the types of attributes that, that our fan base can, can really rally around. Hey, Jock, I'm John Torres at, uh, over at Florida today. Um, how much time have you had to actually analyze the roster, and what are your, are your impressions so far? I just landed about 10 p.m. last night, but uh, I've done my work and my research with the team. That's the part that's the, the beauty lies within the relationship between Rob and I, and that, uh, as he stated, we'll put a product on the floor that the community and the people who support us will be definitely proud of. Bill? Philip Rossman Reich from OrlandoMagicDaily.com. Uh, you spent a year playing in Orlando, and, and obviously the opportunity is, is one that's difficult to pass up. But what about coming back to Orlando appealed to you, uh, aside from the Disney thing? <laughs> well, at the time, I didn't have kids, so uh, Disney wasn't such a big deal. But uh, my dog was born here, so it's like a homecoming for him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for me, it was the DeVos family. I've never seen their commitment waiver one bit uh, when I was here, when I left, and now that I'm back again. And that's a great thing to say. George? Yeah, uh, Rob, George Diaz with the Sentinel. The guy to your, what is it, right, I guess. What was the difference in terms of all the other viable candidates that you interviewed that said, made you say, this is the guy we want? You know, we interviewed a handful of worthwhile candidates, and, and as we were going through the process, jocks, his passion for preparation, his his vigorous attention to detail, and just the presence with which he, he speaks and conducts his business really resonated to us as, you know what, this, this guy's a good fit, and this guy's about what we want to be about. He represents the things that, that we feel are important and critical to success. And at the end of the day, uh, for me personally, he's a lot smarter than I am. And, uh, you know, I remember my dad always telling me, if you're ever in a position where you're hiring people, make sure you hire people who are a lot smarter than you. And, and uh, this has certainly been the case with Joe. Joe? Alex, Joe Kevin, WFTV. Now that you have the GM and the head coach in place, uh, the next step is inevitably Dwight Howard in resolving that situation. Do you have a timeline, or do you hope to have that completed by a certain day? I'm just going to reiterate what you've heard thus far, and we're going to do what's in the best interest of this organization moving forward. We're not going to let anybody else dictate the timeline. We're not going to let anybody else dictate the parameters. Uh, when we determine that the time is right to make a decision and what that decision will be in the best interest of this organization and our fans, we'll do that. So you're not ruling out the possibility that Dwight can start the season on the team? We will do what's in the best interest of the organization. Larry? Rob, can you clear up a few things for us? Uh, last Wednesday's meeting with Dwight, could you clear up some some things that were said and what actually happened and also going forward? Are you saying that he could play the whole season here? And what is the best deal for you guys? I mean, what are you thinking when it comes to that? Is that still the case? That was like 17 questions. <laughs> <laughs> what, what would you like cleared up? What, what, what happened and what was said? What so, was not said? Sure. What's true, what's fact, what's not? We'll, uh, we'll stay true to, to our mantra of keeping the details and the specifics of our dialogue internal. What I can tell you is we, we went out there and met with Dwight, and the purpose and the intent was to simply get some face time with him, uh, check in on him, check in on his back and his rehabilitation process, which is uh, moving along smoothly. And it was more than anything a check-in. You know, we're, we're going around the, the loop and, and checking in with our guys and, and, and just really touching base with them. And there were things discussed. and. Again, for the integrity of the process, we're going to make sure that those things remain confidential. Did he have any other demands besides being traded? Did he have any other questions besides being traded? We talked about a, a lot of different things, to be quite honest with you. Um, and you know, the meeting was, was one that, again, it was it was a, a personal situation where we could look eye to eye, face to face, and and exchange some dialogue, you know, in the same room again. Were you able to glean anything new? You know what? It was very similar to our previous meeting. You know, it it, uh, it reminded me a lot of the movie Groundhog Day, where you go in and, and 
it's, it seems like the same the same meeting. And that's not necessarily a, a bad thing or a good thing. It, it just is what it is. And you know, sometimes the process takes a circular form, and, and that's that's just part of the process. And we got to continue to to navigate through it. Did you tell him that you might start the season here, and we might keep the whole year? You know, we Did talked about a lot of different things. things. We talked about a lot of different things, and uh, again, the specifics will remain quiet. Okay, Dick. Uh, Jacques Dick Scanlon, Lakeland Ledger. Congratulations. Um, you were effusive in your praise of uh, Pop, and he helped you transition from being a player to a coach. Can you tell us, uh, in in the two years you were on that job, what made you more prepared now to be a head coach? And I wonder if Rob might have, uh, might weigh in on that too. He gave me the the opportunity. Uh, he threw me into the fire. He gave me the responsibilities of the other assistants. And that's why I'm so indebted to him. He was an open book to me. Whether it was the dinners we shared, the practice we shared, the talking that we shared. And that's why he's, he's such a special individual. And for me to have the, the access to him, make this opportunity appealing and also for me I think ready for the opportunity because of the, the countless amount of hours that I spent with him and, and, and tried to grasp every single thing that he wanted to share and the things that he didn't want to share. Bit of advice or pieces of advice you've received over the last week? Give me a phone number. <laughs> Give me a phone number. Um, I say the one bit of advice in which I will hold you to value is get good people around you. It's as simple as that. And that's what I'll do. Rob, it's pretty much known as what he's kicking and screaming wanted to, to get a trade and his agents out there saying he's going to become a free agent next year. Is there a concern with, with you and the organization that that Dwight, uh, if you do not trade him, will will come back in the fall and say, I still have to continue to rehab him. And, and if you don't trade him, he's just not going to suit up because his, his back's going to still be need to be rehabbed. Are you concerned with that at all? Happen? Yeah, the concern is the concern is to to take it one day at a time. Continue to sift through the process. Continue to analyze the situations that are presented to us. Continue to analyze our own internal um, benchmarks, and, and we'll we'll be prepared for for any scenario that that's thrown our way. Pedro, Rob, really quick, I just want to touch base with uh, Fran Vasquez. Um, I don't know what happened exactly, but we all know that he was drafted so many years ago and he still hasn't played one single game in Orlando. Was there any intention to bring him this season? or Because I know he signed in Europe. What happened with that situation? Well, you know, our plan moving forward is, you know, we'll spend this year uh, developing a relationship with Frank. You know, and there's a mutuality that needs to exist with his desire to want to be here and our desire to want to have him here. And, uh, you know, one of the things that we'll be pretty proactive with in general is, is really establishing rooted, long-lasting relationships with all of our guys, and that's that's important to us, and, and certainly Fran falls under that umbrella, and, and we'll spend, you know, the coming months and, and season trying to get to know him, and that's the starting point. Okay, a couple more. We'll go with Mike and then Larry. 
Mike Bianchi, Orlando Sentinel. Alex, um, Jacques says you guys sort of stuck your neck out for him, a leap of faith. Do you think you stuck your neck out in a leap of faith? I don't think so at all. I think in Jacques you have a player um, who has been a student of the game under some of the greatest coaches that have coached this game. And through this interview process, he made it very clear to us that uh, that was not a passive relationship. You know, he was taking notes from the day he was playing for Coach Williams in Kansas. Uh, because I really believe that Jock felt that he'd be sitting in his seat someday. And so he's been preparing himself for this day, as he alluded to, for 14 years, not two. Um, so I don't think we're sticking our neck out at all. Um, he's, as I said, a high character individual who's going to work as hard or harder than anybody else. He's going to put great people around him. And his teams will work hard every single night. I'm convinced of that. And I think he clearly is prepared for this opportunity. So I don't think we've taken a risk or stuck, stuck our neck out at all. Um, he's the right coach for this organization at this point in our history. Rob and Alex, real quick. Uh, previously, we talked about the white could possibly start the season. Have you ruled out him being here all season without a contract extension? I'll reiterate, I'll reiterate what I stated earlier. We'll make our decision based on what's in the best interest of the organization. And uh, we're not going to sit here and dictate today exactly what that's going to be. As Rob has said, we're going to look at every circumstance. We're going to be prepared for it. And uh, we're going to do what's in the best interest of our organization and our fans to put a winning team on the floor uh, for the future. Okay, Joe, last one, if you could get the microphone. Uh, Joe Kepner, WFTV again. Um, with all that being said, you're in a slightly different perspective. You have to coach this team. Can this team be successful with the uncertainty of White Howard's situation if it's hanging over it the entire season? I will believe in every single guy that puts on the magic team. That's the way I am. I will coach them because they want to be coached. I will hold them accountable, and I will be consistent every single day. But I will believe in every single individual that puts on a magic uniform this year and their abilities to compete and, and play for this organization. All right, thank you.